Thank you, Justice. All one of you. No, I'm kidding. Listen, don't forget, if you're going to family camp, see me in, I've got to meet with family camp. I forgot first. We've got a family camp meeting in the youth room. It takes about 10 minutes. Really important. We've got 30 people going to family camp from our congregation this year. There's 140 family campers coming. So I'm excited. It's our biggest camp to date. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you, we love you, we thank you for the word of God. Father, I thank you that every promise of God is yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Father, I thank you that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let your word, Father, fill our hearts, Lord. Let it generate change and faith in our hearts. Where there's doubt and unbelief, Father, may it be cast aside and replaced with faith and trust, and hope in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Speak through me, Father, to these your people. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. I want to continue my teaching about the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to touch on some scriptures that you've probably never heard taught in church in your life. You know, I want to preface my message by saying this. And to, today's going to be a little bit different. You're going to see scriptures up here, but this is going to be a note-free message. So listen, did you know that the Holy Spirit was never meant to be a divider of denominations? That the Holy Spirit came in days of old amongst the Hebrews, my Jewish ancestors. It came upon the prophets came upon the high priests, and it came upon the kings of Israel. And now in modern times, through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, our Heavenly Father has made the Holy Spirit available for all men and all people around the planet, irregardless of denomination, irregardless of affiliation, irregardless of any of that, The only thing and the only prerequisite is that you're a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. You know, I have the privilege of praying with other ministers every Wednesday. And there are some ministers from all different denominations that are baptized with the Holy Spirit praying tongues. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit, even the tongue thing, you know, a lot of churches will bypass any scriptures that talk about that because they're worried about offending people. Did you know that in order for us to see the the precious Holy Spirit do what he wants to do in these last days, we need to be more concerned about offending God than offending people. And I will tell you this, that the Bible says if you're ashamed of the Lord or of his word, he will be ashamed of you on that day. Do you know how scripture says that? You can't be ashamed of any part of the word of God. Now, if there's a part you don't understand, you need to glean understanding, but never be ashamed of the Word of God. I'm not ashamed to stand here and tell you that I'm a fool, the Holy Spirit, child of God. Not ashamed. There's no shame. Well, what if the world thinks or the people? Doesn't matter because I'm concerned what Heavenly Father thinks. Amen? What if there's people, Pastor, that use the expression of the Holy Spirit in extreme ways and act all weird and crazy? Well, we know that's not biblical too, right? So, listen, we're looking for the real, I'm looking for the authentic from Heavenly Father. And that's what I want to teach you about. So a quick review, we said that the gift or baptism of the Holy Spirit was given through the laying on of hands by those with apostolic giftings. Modern times, it's the same. In a few rare occasions, you have individuals who will be at home by themselves praying and asking Jesus to baptize them with the Holy Spirit. They'll get baptized with the Holy Spirit. Or you'll have, like at our men's retreat, somebody's praying, seeking God, Holy Spirit sovereignly baptizes them with the Holy Spirit. But most of the time, it's given through the laying on of hands. And it's important to understand this gift or baptism of the Holy Spirit is available for all believers. You don't have to be a part of a denomination or a part of this or that. You just have to be a believer in Jesus. You say, well, you know, I don't think I need a pastor because I'm just comfortable just right where I'm at. 
Well, if the disciples who walked with Jesus for three years needed it, and Jesus told them, don't move from Jerusalem till you receive it, so are you saying you're better than Peter, James, and John? They needed it, but you don't need it? We all need it. The gift of God cannot be bought with money. Amen? So weird charlatans trying to sell the gift of God on television and pedal holy water and all that are a mess. Charlatans can't be bought with a gift. Cannot be bought with money. Someone say amen. amen. Quick review. This gift of the Holy Spirit was now for both Jew and Gentile. First the Jews received it. Then the Gentiles. It doesn't say if we're Jews and charismatics. It says Jew and Gentile. All Gentiles. It's not a charismatic thing. It's a Bible thing. Someone say amen. amen. One evidence, one evidence of receiving the gift was this supernatural prayer language, and that's what I've been speaking about. One evidence. Somebody said, well, you know, you don't receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit to speak in tongues. No, you receive it to receive the power God gives you. Someone say amen. But the tongues come free. Kind of a weird, funny analogy. How many of you ever go buy some running shoes? Amen? You buy them so you can have a pair of shoes that fit. The tongue comes free. <laughs> Never bought a pair of running shoes without a tongue, have I? Listen, Holy Spirit wants control of your tongue. Someone say amen. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants control of your tongue. We said last week that the tongue is unruly member, it says in James, right? And it's the tongue that's set on fire in hell. Well, all that is on YouTube. You can catch it because that was last week. That was all just a little refresher review. Now we're on to new stuff. Did you know that the praying in tongues was prophesied in the Old Testament? In Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11, 12. And you can read the whole chapter on your own time. But these two scriptures, literally, when Isaiah wrote it, was a future prophecy that would take place starting from the day that the Holy Spirit birthed His church. We call it Pentecost in Hebrew. It's Shavuot until the year today, 2022. This is a prophecy of these days. And the Lord is speaking, and He says, For with stammering lips and another tongue He will speak to this people. Stammering lips. I looked up that word stammering in the Hebrew, and literally it means unintelligible words to your mind. There are words that natural man cannot and will not understand. So when you pray in the Spirit, your mind's not going to understand, I'm not going to understand, unless Holy Spirit gives you an interpretation. And we're not talking about the gift of tongues, because again, the gift of tongues and your prayer language are distinguished in the Scripture. The gift of tongues is something that occurs in a congregational setting, and the Bible says there needs to be an interpretation by two or three so that everybody's built up, and it says that the tongue is a sign to the unbeliever who comes in amongst you. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit, your prayer language, that's a whole other thing, and that's what we're talking about. So here it was prophesied with stammering lips and another tongue he will speak to this people, to whom he said, now this is key, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. So when you're praying in the Holy Spirit, and this is speaking, we've had 22 people baptized with the Holy Spirit in the last four weeks. And out of all of you who have received your new prayer language, you've got to use it. It's not a one time and you're done. Water baptism, you get water baptized, you're done. Baptism in the Holy Spirit, man, you've got to use it all the time. Everybody say all the time. All the time, all the time, all the time. Amen? Somebody gives you a beautiful Ferrari, you're going to let that thing just rot in your driveway? You're going to use it, amen? Man, listen, you've got this new stammering lip and another tongue to speak to God. And this is what happens. As you begin to use it, he says, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. It brings rest to your soul. 
rest to your soul. How many of you ever find yourself distressed because you're overstressed? How many of you ever find yourself going through some battles during the week and you need to be strengthened, right? Listen, you need rest. And the Holy Spirit, as you're praying in the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden, the Spirit of God just causes a spirit of rest and a spirit of, what's the next part say? A spirit of refreshing. This is the refreshing. Everyone say refreshing. This is the refreshing. How many of you know that one day when we do get rain again, it will be a time of refreshing, amen? A time of refreshing. Lord willing, the heat will go away, even if it's just for a day. It'll be cool, it'll be clouds, no sun, and it'll be a season of refreshing. So the same thing, when you're praying in the Holy Spirit, it allows the Holy Spirit the opportunity to bring refreshing to your soul and refreshing to your spirit. I need refreshing. You need refreshing, amen? So what am I saying? I'm saying that we need to be praying in the Spirit all the time. The Apostle Paul told the Corinthian church, which was kind of a charismatic church, but they were going kind of overboard because they would all come together, and it wasn't prayer meeting, it was service, and they would just all come together and just pray in tongues. And nobody understood anything. There was no preaching. There was nobody getting edified. And he said, look, when I'm with you, I'd rather speak three words with my understanding than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. But then he goes on and says, but I speak in tongues more than all of you. Why? So he could receive that season of refreshing and rest. Where was Paul? In jail most of the time. Being beat up most of the time. Being shipwrecked most of the time. Amen? If anyone ever needed a season of rest and refreshing in the spirit, it was the Apostle Paul. So an encouragement to us, whether you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit for three weeks or 30 years, you need to get back to using the Spirit of God and allowing the Holy Spirit in you to pray through you for what you need. Someone say amen. amen. Let's look at some more scripture. Now, why am I talking about this? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. These are the flyover scriptures preachers never talk about. Either they don't understand it or they're afraid of offending people. But this is the Word of God, and it is what it is. Amen? I told somebody one time, you have a problem with the tongue thing, you can take it up with Jesus when you see him, amen? I didn't do it. This is God's thing, and there's a reason for it. How many of you know God is perfect in all of his ways? He doesn't make a mistake. Someone say amen. Man, just that fact alone would free some of us. People blaming God for all kinds of things. Hate to tell you all this, fault doesn't lie with God ever. So if fault doesn't lie with the Lord, who's it lie with? Uh-oh. On the last day, John 7, 37, the great day of the feast, Jesus, our Lord, stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, the Lord says, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly, some of your translations say out of his heart, but literally in the Greek, and that's why I put heart in parentheses, because belly is the actual translation. Physically, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Wow, what? So if I come to Jesus, there's these rivers of living water that's supposed to flow out of my belly? Now you ask your average Christian what that's talking about. They're going to look at you, roll their eyes back in their head. They have no idea. And I'm here to tell you, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. I'm going to show you in a minute because he tells us that. And the rivers of living water, that's your prayer language. As you're using that, man, it just brings that refreshing. You see living water, guys? That's like the water in the aquifer down there in the Austin, San Antonio area. That's that underground water that just is alive. It's called living water. It never runs dry. The aquifer has never run dry. That living water is always there. So this living water is our opportunity to tap into the very essence, the very life of God in our life. I need living water because the world dries me up. Does the world dry you up? Do circumstances dry you up? Does sin and all the things we deal with in everyday life dry up the spirit within you? 
So you've got to tap into that living water. Someone say amen. So here Jesus in verse 38 says, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Well, how do you know it's the Holy Spirit, Pastor? Verse 39 tells us. Oh, imagine that. But this he spoke concerning the what? Concerning the what? Everybody say the Spirit. So what's he talking about? The Holy Spirit, whom those believing in him should receive. Now, some of your translations say would, but the word isn't would, it should. Every believer on planet Earth should receive the Holy Spirit, baptism in their life. Not everyone does, but they should. But it goes back to choice. You have not because you what? Because you ask not. So this he spoke concerning the Spirit. So that river of living water flowing out of our belly, he's speaking about the Holy Spirit, whom those believing in him should receive. You should receive the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. It's only when Jesus rose from the dead and ascended to be with the Father that he sent Holy Spirit to infiltrate the believers all around the world so that we would be that new creation full of the dunamis, the dynamite, the power of God. Peter was a nervous wreck even after the resurrection of Jesus. Doors were locked. Man, Jesus raised from the dead, but they're fixing to come for us, boys. And he gets baptized with the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden, man, the dunamis of God, that power of God takes over. Peter stands up and preaches, and 3,000 people get saved. Two days later, he didn't go to a theological school for four years. This was the Holy Spirit. We've replaced the Holy Spirit with man-made ways. And we've stopped seeing the power of God move because we want to be in control. This is about Holy Spirit being in control of us. Someone say amen. amen. So listen, when you're praying in the Holy Spirit, it's literally God's Spirit in you, praying through you, and physically, you can almost feel it comes from your belly. It's the most amazing thing. It's the most amazing thing. 1 Corinthians 14.14, 14, the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, for if I pray in a, in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So when you're praying in the spirit, it's God's spirit in you praying through you for what you need, but your mind will not understand. Now that bothers some of us. How many of you like to be in control? All the rest of you are lying. I like being in control. I hate to fly because I'm not in control. I mean, I'm trusting a pilot I've never met and hope he had a really good day. Hoping the mechanics aren't mad at the company. I mean, right? I mean, it's all about a trust thing. So when I'm praying in the Spirit, my brain does not understand. That's the way God designed it. You need to understand it and accept it. Amen? Now, does that mean he never gives you interpretation? Sure he can. But those are rare occasions. That's not 90% of the time. 1 Corinthians 14.4 He who speaks in a tongue edifies, that means builds up, refreshes, causes rest to who? Himself. But he who prophesies edifies the church. Now I'm not going to get into prophecy. You women have a, a tremendous conference coming up. I encourage every one of you ladies to make time on your calendar to attend that prophecy conference. Both of those women, anointed of God, Miss Ruth, we're going to have her stay and speak to us all as a congregation at Sunday morning. But I'm telling you, God transformed lives last year, and he's going to do it again. But that's going to be prophecy. Here, Paul says, he who speaks in a tongue builds himself up. Now, if I were to stand here and put my hands on Toby and pray in the Spirit, I may say I'm praying for him, but in the truth, it says if I speak in a tongue, I'm edifying who? myself. So you need to be edified because how can you give out life unless you have what? Life to give. 
How can you splash living water on other people unless you first have allowed the Holy Spirit to splash living water on you? How can you give to a hungry, dark, needy world unless you have something to give? And the world is not interested in religion. This young generation is not interested in religion. They're interested in the authentic, the real power of Jesus Christ. And God's going to show it through each and every one of you, not just through preachers in these last days. Someone say amen. Jude verse 20. Same thing, says, but you, beloved. Now this is Jude, the half-brother of our Lord. Says, but you, beloved, building up yourself, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. How do you build yourself up in your holy faith? Praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying. Now listen, you talk to somebody who hadn't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're going to have 20,000 weird commentaries on this. But I'll tell you what it really means. It means exactly what it says. You're praying in the Holy Spirit. You're building up your faith. Do you know the Scripture only gives two ways for you to build your faith? Just gives two. One is faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? The Word of God. So hearing the Word of God, reading the Word of God, listening to the Word of God builds faith in your heart. The second thing it builds faith is when you've received your prayer language, praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit builds up your faith in God. How many of you need your faith built up every day? How many of you need to read Scripture every day? How many of you need to pray every day? So make praying in the Spirit a part of your prayer. Now, I've shared with you guys what's really beautiful about praying in the Spirit is you can pray in the Spirit any time because your minds, your thinking is unfruitful. I could be in the shower and pray in the Spirit. I'd be driving the car and pray in the Spirit. I could be reading my Bible and pray in the Spirit. I could be walking around in circles praying in the Spirit. That's normally, you laugh, but that's actually normally what I do is I walk and I pray. So what I'm saying is, it's easy to pray in the Spirit. It's not hard. You just pray in the Spirit whenever you got time. You pray in the Spirit, amen? Now, how many of you know that you can't do that with your known language, which for us is English, right? I mean, it's hard to be driving. You can pray maybe a few minutes, but it's hard to be praying the whole time on a long trip. It's hard to be praying in English while you're trying to read. Matter of fact, I've never done that. I can't multitask like that. Why? Because you've got to concentrate on what you're praying. You're thinking and praying, which is a part of it, right? But when you're praying in a spirit, man, it's God's spirit in you praying through you for what you need. And your mind doesn't understand. Your thinking is unfruitful, but you're edifying and building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the spirit. Amen? Listen, this is first century Christianity I'm teaching you guys, and I'm teaching you something that I've been walking in for nearly 40 years. Nearly 40 years. Now, being baptized with the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues does not make you a perfect Christian. You still battle the flesh. Someone say amen. You still got the same battles everybody else does, but now you've got the power of the Holy Spirit in your toolkit to help you. Amen? It's kind of, listen, let me give you a cute little analogy I used to give when I talked to people as a young man about this. How many of you ever used to drive a beat-up jalopy? How many of you still drive a beat-up jalopy? <laughs> so, listen, I used to have a 1970 Plymouth, was it Plymouth Duster? I love that car. I had a V8. I mean, it was just awesome. And one time I went with a friend of mine, and I thought I was the Dukes of Hazard. And we went down to a part of uh, South Texas, south of Galveston. Um, I can't even remember the, the name of it now. But it's Freeport. Went down to Freeport where you could drive your car on the beach. Well, to get to the beach, there was the little drive you could go where there was a dune. So I told my friend, because I thought it would be cool, I was like, look, let's just take the dune. <laughs> so I gunned my car up the dune. I mean, we were in the air. It was awesome until we landed because when we landed the car stopped moving it landed and sank past the hubs to the door fourth of july weekend we were going out there light fireworks fish and have fun all night long because i was a poor child and couldn't afford a tow truck all night long we dug me and my buddy alex and we dug and we dug and people walk by, they didn't want to help dig, they'd laugh. 
They say, ah, you're going to need a helicopter to get that out. So I said all that to say this. When you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, it's like taking a Plymouth Duster and adding a turbo boost to it. Okay? Then I would maybe clear the sand and land in the ocean. But we need that turbo charge in our life. Amen? Listen, how many Christians struggle? They're just barely... How in the world are we going to reach the world if we can't even allow Jesus to transform our own life? You can't do it on your own, brothers and sisters. I'm here to testify that you need the Holy Spirit. And it's not a denominational thing. It is a Bible Jesus thing. Someone say amen. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. Now, King James, it uses the word infirmities means weaknesses. How many of you have weaknesses? Amen. We all do. The Holy Spirit helps our weaknesses. Now listen, if you stopped right there, that should be enough to make you desire to hunger for the Holy Spirit in your life. You need help with your weaknesses. Or are you like, "Ah, no, God, I got this. No, you don't have it. Someone say amen. For we do not know what we should pray for as we should. How many of you know that's true? Man, I'm trying to pray for my children, try and pray for my, my, my relationships, try and pray for the congregation, try and pray for all these things, and you're doing the best you can in English, but you really don't know how you ought to pray for as you should. But the Spirit, everybody say, but the Spirit. But the Spirit. I love that, but the Spirit. Man, here comes turbocharge. And he's not an engine man. He's the creator of the universe. It was the Spirit of God that hovered over the face of the deep in Genesis. It was the Spirit of God when God spoke and Jesus brought into existence creation. It was the Holy Spirit that made things happen. And he lives in little bitty me. Mind-blowing. Someone say amen. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And if you look this up literally in the Greek and research it out, it's these groanings that can't be uttered intelligibly. Where do we hear that word intelligibly before? With other lips and stammering tongue shall I speak to this people. Amen? Stammering tongue. So as you're praying in the Holy Spirit, it's the Spirit Himself praying through you with these groanings, with this other language which cannot be understood. It's unintelligible. If anybody else were to listen in, they would not understand what you're praying or what you're saying. Someone say amen. But it's God's Spirit right here in you praying through you for what you need. That's beautiful. He knows what I need. Amen? God's not Baptist. He's not four square. He's not charismatic. He's not Methodist. He's God. Amen? Amen. And there's not divisions in the body. There's only one kingdom of God and there's only one church. And he's saying to his church in these last days, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. Because without him, you can't do this. Peter couldn't do it. Paul couldn't do it. And John couldn't do it without the Holy Spirit. How much more does little old me need the power of the Holy Spirit? To work through my life. Someone say amen. amen. Hang in there. Almost done for the day. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to what? So you see, I didn't make that up. It's God's Spirit in you praying through you for exactly what you need. He's making intercession for you according to God's will. That means when I'm praying in this unknown prayer language, I'm praying the perfect will of God down for my life. Perfect will of God for my life. Someone say amen. Man, that makes me want to pray in the Spirit even more. I've woken up praying in the Spirit. I've woken myself up sometimes singing in the Spirit, and I can't sing very good. That's probably why it woke me up. 
Go to sleep praying in the Spirit. Man, you can pray in the Spirit all the time. Why am I saying that? Listen, I'm trying to encourage you guys. You've got to use all 22 of you plus others what the Holy Spirit's given you. You've got to use it, use it, use it. Don't be shy. Don't be ashamed. This is the Word of God. This is what you want. Listen, you cannot pick cherry pick Scripture. That's why the church is so weak. We'll talk about this, but this we're not going to talk about. But we'll talk about this, but not this. No, it's all from God. Someone say amen. amen. Sometimes things just need to be said. Amen. I guess I'm the one to say them. But I'm not the only one. Men and women around the world. Man, getting baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't care what tag title or license they got wrapped around their neck. I don't care what theological license on their wall. None of that impresses God. You better have the power of the Holy Spirit. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. And it shall come, Peter quotes this in Acts chapter 2, it shall come to pass afterward, says Joel, through the Spirit of God, that I will pour out, now this is Holy Spirit speaking through Joel. It says in the last days, it shall come to pass afterward, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Everybody say all flesh. flesh. Don't say just charismatic flesh. Don't say just Jewish flesh. All flesh. Anybody that's willing to go all the way and wants, wants what the Lord wants them to have, all you've got to do is say, yes, Lord. And also, all my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Now, you may not recognize this or realize this, but in the days of the book of Joel, the men servants and the maid servants, they were the lowest class of people. Not in God's eyes, but viewed by society. Are you following me? And God's saying there's going to be no distinction. My spirit's going to be available to everyone. Regardless of class, regardless of societal position, my Holy Spirit, will be available to you. Hallelujah. Then let's take advantage of that, amen? Let's grab him, let's use him. Let's allow him to pray through us for the perfect will of God. Matthew 3, 11 through 12, I indeed, this is John the Immerser. We call him John the Baptist. No, he was not the first Baptist. <clears throat> I indeed, now I married a Baptist, so I'm not picky on the Baptist. I indeed, bet they make good wives. <laughs> And good husbands, amen. (laughs) I indeed, don't you, Mama, where you at? See, yeah. She was a good Southern Baptist, amen. I indeed baptized you with water unto repentance, John says. But that's what we did this morning, baptism. But he who's coming after me, who's he speaking about? Jesus, who is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not even worthy Some translations say to untie, but this says to carry. I don't think you untie. Maybe you untied sandals. I don't know, back then. I don't think they had flip-flops like we have today. If you see anybody trying to tie a pair of flip-flops, you might want to pray for them. (laughs) He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with what? So Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Who's the baptizer in the Holy Spirit? Men can lay their hands on you, but Jesus is the baptizer. Amen? How many of you have ever had a dead battery in your car? And you had to get a jump. Don't you hate that? It's either really, really cold out or really, really hot out when it happens. Your batteries run dead. you go got to get a jump. Can you imagine if you hooked the jumper cables up to the car battery and grabbed the other end and put them in the air and said, Okay, Mama, start the car. They're not hooked to anything. She's going to look at you like you done lost your mind, man. Right? You've got to connect it to what? A live battery where it don't work. So when somebody prays and lays hands on you, they're just the jumper cables. There's no power in them. The power is of God. The power is of Jesus because Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. When we baptize you with water, the man's doing the baptizing. But when you get baptized, submerged with the Holy Spirit, It's Jesus himself that's submerging you. Ooh, that gives me chills. 
His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Now, I'm going to quit here because next week, remember, John, look at verse 11, the last part. I have it underlined. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Everybody say with fire. We don't talk about the fire. We always talk about the Holy Spirit. So next week, we're going to get into the fire and what it means to winnow. Amen? Let's all stand to our feet. Are you encouraged today?